it was a pastor say that, you know, it was God's like providence to make babies mm -hmm. as beautiful and as cute as they are. Because if you Aww. think about it, I'm like, he was like, babies, they require so much work. They literally can't do anything for themselves. Like they yeah. come and they cry all night. They rob you of your rest. It, if you're the woman, it took a lot to physically get them here. Like babies take a lot, but, but yeah. even though they, they require so much, there's just something about when you look into the eyes of that beautiful oh. baby, you're just like, it just melts your heart and all of the work and all of the stress and all of the strain, it just kind of goes away because that baby is just so beautiful. And I feel like it was the Lord that told me that the beauty of a woman functions in a similar way. Because Ooh, as, much, as much as we as women will sometimes complain about how it's hard to respect and to submit to our husband, mm -hmm. I think we fail to recognize that some of us are hard to love. Mm. Some of us are very hard to love. Some yeah. of us are very given to conflict. We're emotionally needy. We're naggy. Yes. We're demanding. Uh, we can be possessive. Like we can do Come on. All these things that Come on, make it very <laughs> difficult for a man to love you, but in yeah. a similar way, just like when you look at that beautiful baby, when your husband, there's a, there's something about the beauty of a woman. It functions yeah. in a lot more ways than women understand as difficult as you might be. When he looks at you, he's like, dang, but she's beautiful. You know, and I I've like, never looked at it like and that. So wow. When you let yourself go, when you let your beauty go, you're letting go of a lot more than what you understand because God built a lot of functions into the beauty of a woman. Hey everybody, it's Busy Mark and I am back with another video, but before we begin, I am pleased to announce that The Modest Fitting has officially launched a women's clothing boutique offering skirts and dresses that embody modesty, femininity, and beauty. To learn more about dresses like this one and others available for purchase, head over to themodestfitting.com. But without further ado, let's begin. Thank you everyone for joining us today. I have a special guest with me. Her name is Gwen. I'm going to give her an opportunity to tell you about herself. Hi everyone. So I'm Gwen and I also have a YouTube channel. Um, I'm a Christian and I'm currently a homemaker. I do work part-time as a social media manager and then I help my husband out. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Short and oh, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> And so I wanted to bring Gwen on because I've been a fan of her channel for a really long time. Like I watched all of her videos. <laughs> I and... watch all your videos. That's crazy. <laughs> and I love how genuine you are. Like I just, I really do feel like, I think that there's a way sometimes that like when we're on YouTube and we get in front of a camera, we kind of like, even if we're not meaning to, we like put on a little bit. And I'm like, I just yeah. feel like, but when I'm watching your videos, I'm like, I know I'm getting the real deal. Like, this is the real Aww. deal. Like, this is who you are. And and that comes across. And so I just, you know, I love your channel. That's why I wanted to get you on. Um, but so we we decided we were gonna talk about um, the notion of sex appeal uh -huh. in general for the Christian yeah. woman and specifically yeah. for the Christian wife. And like, where does, the road of sex appeal, sexiness, and a righteous woman, like where do those two intersect or do they intersect? And so before mm -hmm. I add any more context, I just kind of want to like throw that out there. Like just what are your first thoughts when you hear that topic? Well, it's so funny because I saw your comment um, or not your comment, but your post about this. And I noticed that there was like mixed reactions and it's so weird because when I hear this, I think sex appeal is basically attraction in a sexual way. And it's like, why wouldn't you want that for your partner? Or why wouldn't your partner want that for you? You know what I mean? I think it is also important to say, okay, we're not talking worldly sex appeal, you know, like for the average Joe down the street, that would cause someone to stumble. But I think when it pertains to your husband, it's like, yeah, I want my husband to, you know, think that I'm sexy or cute or whatever, because just think about it. If you were laying down with your spouse, wouldn't you prefer that it's someone cute? You know what I mean? Or it's someone not even, and not even model because people can tend to think, oh my gosh, like, well, I'm not a supermodel, but it's like, no, it's not even about being a model. It's just about looking your best. Obviously your partner, my partner, they thought we were cute when they got with us. That's why. So it's about maintaining that. And I think it is, like I said, important to notice that it's not for 
everyone, you know, because that can cause other people to stumble. But mm -hmm. definitely inside of a marriage, I think it's very important. Yeah. I, what do you think? I think um, that sex is something that God made and that the world mm -hmm. hijacked. And then I think that the church, in an effort to overcorrect the way that sex was so heinously bastardized by the world, mm. they like overcorrected and then yeah. cultivated a lot of what I what I would consider sexual dysfunction in the church. Mm. And so you have men who feel ashamed of the fact that they are red-blooded men filled with sexual virility and, and looking Thank for God, someone to yeah. replace it. And and yeah. and they're like that was given to them by God, and then you have women who also suppress what was yeah. given to them as a like a God given sexual nature, and even some women who feel ashamed of or feel like the sexual appeal of their body is now sinful because of the way that the world bastardized sex and sexual yeah. appeal. And so, like That's you, so I, I did go through the comments, and I did see that there was quite a bit of a mixed bag. Like there are some yeah. people who are like. When I think of sex appeal, I think of lust and that's sin. And I'm like, mm, yeah, I don't know about that. You know what I mean? Like, I just, yeah. I just don't know. I, and I think that you brought up a good point that I would agree with. Just like sex is not sinful, sex mm -hmm. wielded sinfully is sin. And mm -hmm. sex appeal is not sinful, but sex mm -hmm. appeal wielded sinfully is sin, right? The average girl down the street, yeah, exactly. causing him to stumble. Exactly. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and I think a while ago, I made a video about like, just how to um, cultivate femininity in your outward appearance. And one of the okay. things that I mentioned in there was that um, your dress as a woman, not a dress, but just your wardrobe. Yeah, to yeah. Be, beautiful and feminine and mm -hmm. modest because out in public the sex appeal is not that's not the proper context but in the privacy of your home like that's when you should like turn it up a notch yeah or yeah. two yeah. yeah i think like a lot of what i hear people say it's like it, it's important to remember that it doesn't have to be either or it can be both and like i do know a lot of people say well that shouldn't be our most important aspect or quality about us the way that we look it's true that's not the most important thing but it's like it is okay to have both like it is okay to say oh my most important thing is to be a godly woman but it's also nice to look good for my spouse like it doesn't have to be oh she's either a godly woman or she looks cute for her husband you know right. it could be both so yeah. i think that's important to remember i i'm glad that you brought that up also because i think that sometimes like the tendency can be to spiritualize things. What she was saying was like, yeah, you know, what true sexiness is, is like virtuous character. And I'm like, I do, of course. Think, that, <laughs> I do think that virtuous character is is attractive. Yes. And also yeah. having a banging body is attractive. You know yes. what I'm saying? It's, like, we're not going to act like, we're <laughs> not going to act like those two are like, one in the same or that they're yeah. interchangeable because there is a way that you can be a woman that's very rich in character and also yeah. not taking care of yourself and, and largely unappealing. And, and I would even say that's a red flag because mm -hmm. how are you going to be rich in character and then not be a good steward over your body? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's almost like you have this guy who he's such a you would look at him maybe like he's a strong man you know but then he don't want to work he don't got a job it's like is he really a strong man I don't right. Know, you know? right it's like it kind of goes together and not saying again you have to be supermodel status because I would like to be a little bit more put together you know physically but like you know, take care of yourself. And this kind of goes into one. And I really, that's why I like your channel. And I like a lot of other people who are talking about this because when you look at them, you can see they're not just acting, you know, like this is their real life. Like they, they take pride in not only what they say, normally when I listen to people, the main thing that I see is, okay, what are they saying? But then second to that, I'm like, okay, how is this carried out? Mm -hmm. You know, are they really speaking what they're preaching or living out what they're preaching? Are you eating nonstop? Are you getting drunk? And 
Guys, that's not to say I've never done that. I took video, I was like, I got saved in 2017. So before that, my college years, I was the glutton. I was the person going to parties and getting drunk, you know? But when you become transformed and God comes into your life, it changes you and that changes really everything about you, you know? And mm -hmm. I don't know when you wanted to touch on this, but the being a good steward over your body, mm -hmm. when I was living, heavily in sin and sin ruled my life I did not care what I ate you know I didn't care all the alcohol me puking at part I didn't care if the smoking cigarettes if you guys like heard my testimony there was a time where I was literally damaging my body so much and I remember after being saved after having that like wow it was almost like being awakened to my sin and i just started realizing i don't want to smoke anymore because i am damaging my body like i don't want to do this and it changes your appetite for things you know that that was i mean it, it it is all pertinent and i what i i think of what i was saying before is like there is a way that we can spiritualize things too much and like oh yeah like you know being gentle and quiet that's sexy and i'm like yeah that's sexy but like lingerie is sexy too and and you keeping your body together and having a nice shape is sexy and then there's also the opposite where everything can be about the outward appearance and then when you get to know a person they're devoid of all character and integrity and then that's not attractive either and so yes. to act like one is more important than the other in either direction that the character yeah. is more important than the body or that the body is more important than character i just don't i don't i'm not on that train and i feel like mm -hmm. a lot of um sometimes christians are and i think that they're kind of fooling themselves you know like because I think that, you know, okay. their husband, their husband understands the distinction between good character and a good body. Yeah. He may not say that because he's mm -hmm. not going to want to hurt her feelings, but he sees it. And the woman, I think, sees it too, but will because she may not be where she wants to be, just choose self-deception. And so that's actually yeah. why we're talking about it, because I want to encourage women to understand that, no, you're not vain. Um, if you want to yeah. invest in taking care of your body. And I think that that segues nicely into the next point that we were going to talk about is um, where does, so I think the question was, is sexual appeal, physical beauty important in marriage? And I think it is. And then yeah. the, the next point we were going to talk about is like, how does that even demonstrate stewardship, good stewardship of your body? And you kind of touched on that. Um, Goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think like being, a good Christian is being a well-rounded Christian. And so it's not just one thing, you know? And I think, yeah, like you said, a lot of us do tend to maybe focus one or the other, and it's all about balance, you know? And that's like, that's the ideal thing to do. And I love it because I get so confused when people say that, because when I go to scripture, I don't get this picture of that it's just, you know, oh my goodness, yes. You know, like, I don't get this picture. I get the picture of like the well-rounded, you yes. know, like she's well-rounded. I mm -hmm. think another good way to think about it too is, um, I'm gonna give an analogy. You know, I like to talk in analogies. Um, <laughs> you give but... the one-liners. <laughs> I'm like, okay, Bendy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was thinking about like, let's say you had a friend and your friend uh -huh. went out of town and they said, hey, I'm going out of town. I'm gonna be gone a couple months. I'm gonna give you my car. You can just borrow it and you can use it like yeah. it's yours. And you know, when I come back, I'll come and get it. You know that if you if you were dealing with a car that was not yours and you knew that your friend was coming back, you would clean that car. You would probably yeah. put the gas tank. You would make sure when you're driving it to not scratch up or ding up the paint. Yeah. You wanna give that car back to your friend in as good condition as you received it. And we understand that when it comes to a car. But for some reason, when it comes to our bodies, there's a disconnect. And I'm like, Ooh, your body is great. not yours. It belongs to God and he has given you temporary stewardship of it. Why would you want to return back the body in worse mm. condition than it was given to you? Because God didn't give it to you extremely overweight. He didn't give it to you unexercised and, and riddled with disease. And, and I know that some of it is okay. beyond our control, but much of yeah. it, especially in the United States, a lot of the health yeah. problems that we deal with is elective because it's of the way that we choose. Yeah, it's the way we choose to live. And I'm like, well, we understand that with something as as value, not not valueless, but as something as of little value as a car, 
But yeah. When we do the temple and the vessel, yeah. the body. We're like, oh, I can do whatever I want. It's like, no, girl, this doesn't. It doesn't belong to you. It belongs to God, mm -hmm. and you will eventually give it back to Him. So mm -hmm. let's give it back to Him in good condition. That was really good. Wow, it's like yeah. a little. It it is, and it's good to have these kind of conversations because it's just important to know that, like I said there is a time where maybe you don't know like we talk about yeah. sometimes with the disease or things in america like you know once you but it's when you know better that's when you can start to do better so of course if you're not aware of that knowledge like i do know and it's so sad because there was a time where i got super severely overweight and i had to lose weight and that was brutal but oh, yeah. it did happen and mm -hmm. You know, that was coming from a lack of knowledge. It was like, mm -hmm. I just thought, oh, the way that I grew up eating this way was normal. You know, it's like, this is just what we do. And I was even into sports, but I had got overweight, you know, through bad habits. And it's like, once you heal back those habits, then you can get better. So we're not trying to say, you know, if you did things, you're a lost cause because you're not. That's why we have forgiveness. Right. And that's why we right. have people coming with information to let us know, hey, like I said, that chemical in that food, that's going to cause problems over time. Right. Those seed oils, problems over time, you know, and it's like when you know better, you do better. But I, I completely agree with you. And like I said, it's something that I even have to check myself. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the Christian walk, really, like yeah. checking yourself daily and just knowing like, wow, it's so true. This is not our own, you know? And that's why the smoking and the drugs and like whatever else people do that damages you, it's like, no, you're not just looking at it like this is affecting me. And I mm -hmm. think so, and I'm and I'm sure for some people, this is this is probably landing a little hard. And, and that's usually the way that it goes when we talk honestly, like it lands hard. And so I do wanna add um, just some, some caveats like, when i think i think i can speak for both of us like when we're saying to take good take responsibility of good stewardship of your body we're we're encouraging women especially married women to be mindful of the things that they can control not yeah. the things that you cannot so like yeah. you won't be able to control wrinkles in your skin stretch yeah. marks you know um, yeah bars from a sea like you know what i'm the things that you cannot control that's not for you to be worrying yourself about or yeah anything like that but what we're talking more about is the stuff that you can control so like if you have an inappropriate relationship with food you need Correct to it. you need to talk to the lord about that in prayer and get that under control if you have yeah. an issue with laziness when it comes to exercise talk yeah. to the about that you know um if there's like you mentioned with the alcohol like being given to to much wine something that yeah. the bible tells women to not do and men for that matter mm -hmm. as well so personal grooming that's something that you can control yeah taking your baths getting dressed combing your hair stop you know yeah. what I mean? like these are things yeah. that unfortunately sometimes when we get in marriage and we get familiar we give ourselves permission to let Come all on. The things <laughs> that we can control, we let it go. And that's not yeah. right. That's not right. Yeah. Okay. I agree. I agree. I did want to add one thing too to the sex appeal as well. And it kind of ties into being a good steward. I also think lessening the stress in your life is going to help tremendously because I feel like when we are so stressed not only does it wreak havoc on our body but and you know some people would even say that stress causes some diseases you know but also when you're so stressed or you haven't really learned how to you know because we all life happens to all of us and it's like it's important to know how to manage that and in managing that not only will you help your health and your physical body but you're also going to be able to walk in your femininity walk in your sexiness for your spouse you know because imagine if you are getting intimate with your spouse and you're thinking about all oh, this stuff oh my gosh I gotta do this I gotta do that it's like is, is this pleasurable I don't know yeah, <laughs> just a little yeah. bit you know it's like and then too when we think about just a virtuous woman we think of someone who is soft and slow to speak now does that mean she doesn't express herself or some people were all different we're all unique no but it means like she is she has these qualities where it's like someone who's like panicking and stressed and freaking out like it doesn't go so mm -hmm. i think like that's another important thing is to like figure out how to like manage your stress and it takes time to figure out 
what exactly helps and to be honest exercise really does help like when you're when you're panicking or whatever getting your heart rate up doing a nice hit workout that really does help i don't know what it is is it the endorphins or the dopamine or in the brain or something but it really helps um and there's other ways too but yeah, I would say get the stress levels under control because I've seen a lot of women in my family, you can see what stress does to the body and it's not nice. You know what I mean? So if you can avoid it, please try to avoid it. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. um, before we move on to the next point, I wanted to add something else because I think we're going to transition into some practical tips to help to help the ladies out. But okay. before we do that, I wanted to also point out another way that beauty is important in marriage, beauty mm -hmm. and sexual appeal. And uh, another analogy. Um, Go ahead. <laughs> so <laughs> I was thinking about, I think I heard um, it was a pastor say that, you know, it was God's like providence to make babies as beautiful and as cute as they are because if you Aww. think about it i'm like he was like babies they require so much work they literally can't do anything for themselves like they yeah come and they cry all night they rob you of your rest it, if you're the woman it took a lot to physically get them here like babies take a lot but but yeah even though they they require so much there's just something about when you look into the eyes of that beautiful oh. baby you're just like, it just melts your heart and all of the work and all of the stress and all of the strain, it just kind of goes away because that baby is just so beautiful. And I feel like it was the Lord that told me that the beauty of a woman functions in a similar way. Because Ooh, as, much, as much as we as women will sometimes complain about how it's hard to respect and to submit to our husband, mm -hmm. I think we fail to recognize that some of us are hard to love. Mm. Some of us are very hard to love. Some yeah. of us are very given to conflict. We're emotionally needy. We're nagging. Yeah. We're demanding. Uh, we can be possessive. Like we can do Come on. things that Come on, Miss it very <laughs> difficult for a man to love you, but in yeah. a similar way, just like when you look at that beautiful baby, when your husband, there's a there's something about the beauty of a woman. It functions yeah. in a lot more ways than women understand. As difficult as you might be, when he looks at you, he's like, dang, but she's beautiful. You know, and I, I was, never looked at it like and that. So wow. When you let yourself go, when you let your beauty go, you're letting go of a lot more than what you understand because God built a lot of functions into the beauty of a woman. Like he really did. And so when you're letting that go, when you're letting the gift of beauty, when you're letting the gift of, of um, the hair he gave you go, when you're not neglecting, when you're not taking care of that, you're letting go of a lot of things that you might not be understanding all of the repercussions that are going to come from it. And so I wanted to add wow. that in there because it's, there's just in the same, like we understand it with babies. Like everybody loves babies, even though they scream and they cry. It's like every, cause they're so beautiful. They're just so beautiful. Yeah, That's what the beauty of a woman does too. Even when I you're not looking at it woman, like that. When you I are a difficult woman, like your beauty yeah. can soften that. And the people are going to be like, okay, all right. You know, we'll, well, we'll keep working with her. <laughs> so it's true in public too, if you think about it. And it's like not it saying is. you go out dressing like a crazy person or like super revealing. But if you think about it, there is pretty people do get more things. I know we hate to admit it, but it's like, it's so true. I think I never really looked at it like that in a marriage. Like, dang, my husband, you know, if I go through something where I yell or something, he looks at me and think, oh, she's, you know, I'm attracted to her, hopefully, yeah. more willing. <laughs> you know, but it's like, <laughs> and if I'm looking bad, he's like, scarf on her head. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, and it and it really is. It. And you're correct when it, it's not That's just true. in marriage. Like the, the beauty yeah. of the serves a purpose in the marriage, but it's not just in the marriage. Because yeah. anyone who, anyone who is really, really um, invested in earning, uh, not earning, but learning the art of femininity, if you will. Like I hate to say yeah. it, it's also like kind of fluffy, um, but it is an art form to learn, to to enter into femininity. And when you yeah. do that, you will see that both men and women are just more warm to you. And it, it's just like men are more, they want to be of service. Yeah. Women are more warm and they just Girl, I love your dress. Your skirt looks so pretty. Like that, just people are are drawn to the beauty yeah. of a woman. So when you let it go, you're forfeiting more than you understand. It's important to point out. At least this is my personal belief. I don't even think that beauty is is for young women. I think that beauty is for women. 
because I'm like, again, we saw examples of Sarah. She was old. She was yeah, old. And she was still trying to add her. They were trying to make her wife. And I'm like, and it's because she was beautiful. And that's true. I, for, I forgot yeah. about that, that he had to lie and say, like, exactly. that's my sister. <laughs> exactly. Not about that. So wow. I don't think that, you know, yes, you're right. Like there is, there's different phases of beauty, but I don't, I, it's just not a part of my mentality. I don't think that there's ever a stage where it's like, okay, well back then that's when I was, it's like, no girl, keep taking care of yourself. Keep taking care you, of yourself. You know what? I think a lot of it, maybe it's like, that's when the world can seep in and I have to stop it. Like, no, mm -hmm. the world says that a young woman is beautiful when this is not true, you know? Right. And then also it does play into how I see women in my family as they get older and maybe, you know, they're not taking the best care of themselves. So I automatically think, you know, because they were more inclined to take care of themselves when they were younger. And maybe that's just something I have to kind of like get out of, you know, because I do, you know, if the Lord wills, when I get older, I do want to be, you know, in shape and everything and like, thriving you know because i do see it like online and stuff i do see it and i'm like that's beautiful and not only i'm just talking strictly physical like obviously yeah. there are personalities that i think this is beautiful and this rings true more than beauty but yeah. no you're absolutely right it's something i have to check in my thinking to think no it's not only when you're what the world would say in your youth yeah. you know and even more so because as you get older like you were saying you learn more stuff so we're going to move on to the next thing which is some practical tips about how okay. to just infuse just like sexual appeal, sexuality, just sexiness into your marriage. And mm -hmm. um, because I know that that can be hard. Like, so these are, so these are some things that you can like start doing today to help with that. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing that I have in here is, and this will be a bit of a review because we did touch on it before, obviously dress well, dress femininely. Um, you would be surprised. Like I, I can guarantee you, you could pause this video and go to any store and see what, what I'm about to say is true is that for whatever reason in today's society women do not invest in feminine presentation when they are out in public most mm -hmm. of the time like i just was at target i think yesterday and everybody in there all of the women and the men too but all of the women were like in pajamas sweatpants or just tight denim in a tight shirt like nothing that's really markedly feminine and so i'm like even if you do something basic like just put on a pretty dress or put on a pretty skirt you are automatically going to be yeah. set apart just from that because it's not something that's held in our in our culture and in our society right now for women yeah. to dress femininely and it and it does make an actual impact on the people yeah. around you what, what do you think no, I literally agree. Like when I went to Ukraine, literally you would see women in high heels going to the grocery store. What? Like it was such a shock. Yeah. And then you come back to America and you're like, women are just in joggers or whatever. So I, I think what you said, you said it was like a cultural thing. And I agree because I think in other cultures, maybe either if it comes from their the older women telling the younger women like they put pride on being beautiful or just looking looking nice you know and they understand the importance of keeping it together like even my husband's mom you know she was like putting on makeup every day while she was going out and feeding the rabbits you know oh, so it's wow. like yeah i think it is important um and it is a cultural thing and like you said it's just one of those things that we kind of have to like unlearn you know and once you kind of unlearn it you start to realize like no this is important i do want to look my best when i go out and let me put on you know even if that means to just do my hair good moisturize my face yeah. wear something cute and like i said when you are dressed better i noticed that when i am dressed better or I put an effort people hold the door for me more you know here you go ma'am <laughs> you know it's yes, like you get treated better I so I agree I agree I think we need to take more care of like looking out and you also brought up another point like I always tell my sister because she's dating I always say literally you it's so weird but literally just doing the bare minimum now like covering up your body like mm -hmm. wearing something cute you're being set apart because now online on social media they're all dressing scandalous so you just being looking modest people are going to automatically say oh this is a woman i want to get to know you know yeah. we're back in the day it used to be different back in the yeah. day 
people were probably more modest. So when you did have a swimsuit on, you were like, oh, all eyes were on you. But now, unfortunately, it's changed. Now yeah. it's like everyone is in a swimsuit. So if you're dressed modest, now it's like all eyes are on you. So mm -hmm. I think that's true. And I think if you're dating, definitely being modest, being covered, you know, for what your convictions will allow, you know, definitely putting in effort is going to make a difference for sure. Mm -hmm. Also, in sexual attractiveness, I think too, don't be afraid to initiate. And I know like a lot of people, they think, oh, you know, I just want to be chased. But it's like, after you get married and you guys are together, if your husband has had a long day or something, and you know, being intimate is like a de-stressor for him, like, don't be afraid to initiate, you know? And I really like, I think it was Song of Solomon, but I'm not too sure all my Bible, you know, knowers they'll know. But she actually talks so well about her husband. Like she was, just as into him as he was into her. Like, it is okay to be into and like engulfed in love for your spouse, you know? So don't shy away from being like initiate, initiating things, you yeah. know, taking the lead sometime, you know? And if you're not a person who's like super aggressive, which I wouldn't say I am, but it's like, you know, initiate in little ways. Like you said, go to bed one day with a nice little outfit. He's gonna yeah. know oh is this that time or, you know like he's gonna know so just like i would say taking more initiative is going to help out in that sex appeal because mm -hmm. it is sexy when people want you to you know and this i think it goes for our husbands as well like knowing oh my wife is really trying you know she is serving me she's actually trying like that is attractive so mm -hmm. i would say that mm -hmm. yeah i like that um the other thing that i had on my list was to work on self-confidence and i know that that's like good one yeah it's like it, some people are like oh like okay give me something else but i'm like no seriously like yeah a part of even just within marriage but even outside of marriage mm -hmm. confidence is something that is communicated before someone even opens their mouth and says anything yeah there yeah. Are, there, are, there is a way that um people can learn to command a room without even saying a word yeah. it's just because of the way that they carry themselves with confidence and something that um i i i think that it's just like some people think that it's like okay to do this but a lot of women will sometimes speak disparaging words over themselves in mm. front of their husbands thinking that that is okay saying things like, oh my God, I look so fat or, oh my God, I'm so ugly or what. And I'm like, and I, and I think there, sometimes people do that as a way of fishing for a compliment. Like they say something Come bad on. Themselves <laughs> so that they can prompt the other person to say something. Yeah. Nice. But in the context of marriage, that is very harmful because as yeah. you, you are, whether you realize it or not, you are yeah. planting seeds in your husband's mind about how you fall short whether it's mm. true or not you are planting the seed so don't do that if there Come is on. something that's actually problematic in in your appearance or in your demeanor or with some okay make a real note of it and yeah fix, fix yeah it. don't yeah. don't air it out in front of your husband if you know that you're carrying more weight don't tell your husband i'm so fat oh my god girl just lose the weight don't don't yeah. talk to him about that because and don't date, that, don't be with the brutal man because he'll be like, yeah, it is looking a little crazy. <laughs> don't, don't get with the raw man because literally when you said that, I have done that when I was overweight. I went through a season of literally, this was maybe six months into our relationship and some people will call it a happy weight. I call it, I was really just eating all kind of the night, you know, and literally I would do that. I would say things because it's like, I totally can understand both sides because you are like, dang, I'm not my best. And like, let me just say this to see if he's going to like, deny this but my man is like slavic and he told me yeah your belly's looking a little big <laughs> it, it broke me i'm kidding it broke me for a season and literally that was like a whole transformation because that was a year before i got saved but okay. it was like it was a point where i really had to realize like life is not all about you so when i did gain weight and my husband he did not fail to let me know you know and 
I was broken by it. I got really emotional and I went through all these emotions like, oh my goodness, if my husband, I remember even on Reddit, like if my husband thinks I'm fat, is he not attracted to me? And yeah. he told me he was like, in his culture, his dad would tell his mom when she's getting overweight. Oh. Like it's a normal thing for them to say because it's like, they contributed to health. You know, not it's like, oh, I'm not into you or I don't want to be with you. But it's like, no, this is getting unhealthy, yeah. you know, versus America where we say, you know, there's this whole body positivity movement and that's a whole other thing. But some people, you know, it. I did do that. That's what I bought it up for. I did do the fishing and it backfired mm -hmm. on me. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe it'll work for other people. No, maybe no, other... let me, let me say, don't do it because if it <laughs> works, do. that means that somebody is lying to you. Okay. Yes. If you know that you're overweight and you just telling him that so he could tell you, no, girl, you look itty bitty. Don't, don't, don't do yes. because, yes, yes. <laughs> because it's just, it's that, that lie, it feels good, but it's going to set you up for, for more problems. It and then is. the planting, the planting is so true because it's like words do have power. And so, yeah, in that moment, of course he loves you, but then that's going to probably be in the back of his mind because it carries weight. So it's like, dang, is she getting a little, letting and herself you, go? And you told him, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Wow, and that's, that's wow. why I'm like, be careful yeah. about this tactic of disparaging yourself as a way to fish for validation because cool. you, you're not doing what you think you're doing there. So so that was really good. To just bring it back, if work on your self confidence. If there are things yeah. that that, and it doesn't even have to just be about the body. Like I, I, you know, like if you feel like, you know, like you're ignorant in some way. If there's something that you're like, man, I don't know much about that. Okay, then read a book on it. Like read a book so that you, so that yeah. you you're confident in your standing. Like you don't. There's there's never. That's not to say that we don't have insecurities. We all have them, but you yeah. don't have to keep them. You don't ever yeah. have to keep insecurities. I would That's say just identify what they are and then don't lie to yourself and be like, oh, it's not a big deal. No, it's like, okay, if this is an issue, if I know that I don't know how to do something or I'm not, if I'm not very good at cooking or if I'm not very good at whatever, then I'm going to invest the time to learn so that I don't have to feel insecure about not yeah. knowing how to do this thing, you know? So work on the self-confidence because that is actually attractive, not yeah. just to your husband, but everywhere you go. That like yeah. people who are, who are confident have magnetic personalities. So, so that, so that's the next thing. And then the other thing that I wanted to um, include is um, demonstrate. We talked about this a little bit, demonstrate your best assets in front of your husband. And I would say even invest in having a public and a private wardrobe. Mm, like that's good too. Yeah. Invest yeah. in that because there so is keep a way a, keep a private one. Exactly. Yeah. Because there is a way that you need to dress when you're out in public or the way you dress if you have guests in your home. But yes. also there is a way that you need to be dressing at home. Mm -hmm. And it should and and my husband got on me about this actually. <laughs> he calls you out. <laughs> he was like, I really appreciate the modesty stuff and I want you to keep doing that. <laughs> not here, Bendy. <laughs> That, that's that's crazy. To me, uh, he said, "I don't want to see no more skirts, no slips under the skirt." <laughs> really? Wow. See, and I, I, like, me, I like honest people. I yeah. like honest men. Yeah. Wow. And so it made me understand. I'm like, okay, yeah, there is a way that you dress out in public, and that's yeah. and that's necessary to honor the Lord. Yeah. Like, I have a wardrobe that I wear at home. Like, and as long as we don't have guests over, then I'm wearing those things just to in like- In the house. Yeah. And I think that's another thing about sexual appeal too. I think like, yeah, make sure you forget what the world tells you about sex appeal and understand like to your husband, sexual appeal is also exclusive. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, if you have this one car, that everyone can't get, you're like, oh, this is my car, people can't get it. It's the same with women. So if you're walking out with your at-home clothes, that may take away from your sexual appeal in your marriage, because it's like, dang, everyone didn't see you like this. But if yeah. your husband knows, oh, only I'm getting this, you yeah. know, that's gonna wrap it up a little bit. Like, oh, that's really hot, you know? So yeah. I think, I think exclusive, exclusivity is that how you pronounce it yeah. i think that is that is sexy too yeah 
So kind of ties in what you said, like both wardrobes. Yep, yep. And I would also say that there's, and again, hey, I've been married for 10 years and I'm still learning, okay? Um, But what I would say, what I would say is that it's also good to invest in lingerie. Um, I used to hate, I like, that was like the bane of my existence. I'm like, why am I gonna put this on just to take it out? Like, I don't wanna wear this stuff. Um, As I've gotten older, I'm like, no, you need to invest in lingerie yeah um, i'm trying to like figure out like how much i want to talk about it how much i don't i wish i wish there was a way that if i had like a private seminar i could speak more like openly just to like a group of women but this is going on the internet um yeah but, like there's a way that lingerie is important um just mm-hmm. like the um the inner character of a woman is important the exterior is also important and even the way that the exterior is presented to a man yeah. He's yeah. like, and uh, I think the way that my husband said it, and I think he used a good analogy, is he was like, it's the difference between someone just handing you a gift or someone wrapping it up in a gift box. Mm. He's like, you I've never looked at give it like someone that. the thing, like you just yeah. got some for and you just hand it to them, or you can wrap it in a nice, nice wrapping paper, put a bow, and I could like take my time taking the paper off, you know? And I'm like, to me, that doesn't really mean anything, but to men, I think it means a great deal. Yeah. And so yeah. investing in your public wardrobe, your private wardrobe, and even yeah. your bedroom wardrobe, like these are things that actually have to be intentional and strategic on your part as a woman. What guy is going to turn that down? You know, yeah. like you looking good. Yeah. Like my guy, he likes that stuff. You know, <laughs> it's like so. And it, like you, when you brought up confidence, you really do have to work on your confidence. And that's when you start to see how everything kind of intertwines. Because if you're not happy happy with the weight that you are, then it's like, that's gonna show through when you go to wear that kind of stuff. Literally the smallest thing I can tend to feel off about, you know? So it is so important to cultivate that confidence because if you are in that predicament where you are wearing something that is so revealing, you know, which is, it's lovely, but it's like, you really have to have this in you. Like, oh, I look good, you know, and I'm here to serve, you know, you have to have this. So it kind of is, it all goes hand in hand. Yep. And I want to add before we move on to the next point is, um, you want to build confidence on something real, not on just flat. false confidence. Yeah, yes, because I'm like, there yeah. is a way, and that's why I think I've said on my on my video a couple of times that my channel is not a channel where I'm like, "Girl, you're perfect. You're awesome. You're amazing." Because oh, I'm like, no. oh, that yeah. is fluff. It's just fluff. And then in the end, that's not gonna hold. That's not gonna hold up under the reality of like, like your confidence yes. actually has to be based on real accomplishment. So yeah. like, if you know that you like i said if there's something you don't know how to do i'm going to use something like about it that's not related to the body if you if you know that you don't know how to cook you Mm -hmm. might have issues with with confidence in your cooking so how do you fix that you don't just tell yourself oh i'm a good cook i'm a good cook i'm a good cook yeah and then just pretend like you're a good cook no you're like i'm not a good cook i'm gonna go out and buy some cookbooks so that when i cook it actually tastes good and then your confidence comes because you have actually accomplished something and it's yeah. the same thing even with physical things. Like if you know that you're not doing what you do, don't just tell yourself, I'm amazing, I'm amazing. I'm... No, like, okay, this is where I'm falling short and I'm gonna actually do the thing to fix it so that I can actually have real confidence in true accomplishment. And so I just wanna like That's make good. sure that we drive that home because I, I think the temptation might be to just like, I'm just gonna affirm Make it till you make it. Or yeah. like just what the world will tell you, just tell yourself this. It's like, yeah. no, it actually takes work. It does. It actually it takes does. work to be better. That's and that's when you accomplish it and you do the work, then it it's builds really the confidence. Hard. It's hard for someone yeah. to take that confidence from you because you're like, no, uh-huh. I put in the work. I know, yeah. I know I look good. So Yeah. Okay. And so the next tip that I wanted to include, which I think might make some of my Christian sisters clutch their pearls, but um <laughs> I think that when it comes to sexuality, you should be a professional. And I know that some people don't, they feel uncomfortable with that because they, they're having a hard time. A professional how, how, in the bedroom? A professional in the bedroom. When it okay. comes to sexual performance, you should be a professional. And if you're not a professional, oh then you should be 
a professional in training. Okay. I agree. I agree. That's yeah. when you utilize folks. There was a time in the beginning where, you know, I did not know certain things, but I'm a learner. Like I'm here to learn. Like, what do I have to do? Because I don't like being in a predicament where I have something controlling me. If that's a lack of confidence, I personally, I don't like not owning things, you know? Right. So I agree. Now, is that to say I'm like, you know, doing backflips? Probably not, but <laughs> I feel, I think my husband's pretty happy. You know what yeah. I mean? But yeah. I've never heard it like that, you know, yeah. professional. Yes. You know. You should be a professional. And and by professional, girl, if you don't want to swing from chandeliers, then don't swing from chandeliers. But my Come point on. is... <laughs> yeah. But my point is mm -hmm. the confidence, the know-how, the ability, the prowess, you should have that with your husband in the privacy of your marital bedroom. Yeah, I agree. Like, and I think that that's something that, again, when we, when we talk about that as Christians, I think a lot of people are like, oh, I could never, I could never do that, or I could never. And you, so? you wow. should, and you shouldn't do anything that you don't want to do. But what I'm saying is there isn't anything like particularly holy about being approved or about being like i'm uncomfortable in the bed no like sex has been abused and used everywhere the only place that it is holy and right and like full expression it's in the privacy it's, yes between a man and the the woman marriage bed. yeah it's in the marriage bed so that's not so it's that's like true it feels like it's very backwards everybody is unashamed and and bold and in your face about sex and sexuality everywhere but then when we get into yeah the bed, we're like oh i don't know and it's like no, yeah. no that's backwards you got to flip that thing around every marriage else. Right again yeah, yeah. Make marriage right again girl yeah Make you know, right so, again. it kind of reminds me of this thing that i heard and they were like you wouldn't serve your husband a tv dinner every single night would you mm -hmm. and it's so true when you think about it like we go and we're intimate and we're doing the same pose or the same thing every single night. It's like, no, be a little adventurous, like switch it up a little bit, you know, like routine on anyone gets dull after a while. So I agree. I think it should be adventurous, obviously to, you know, there is a degree, like you said, yeah. there are some things that are not made for, because the world will pervert a lot of things, you it know, will. but if it it's good and it the lord did create this for two people who are married and the world perverted that you yes, know but it yes. it's so true i it think true. i think a good general guideline this may not be an exhaustive guideline but the guideline that i like to think about when it comes to just the realm of sexuality in marriage is mm -hmm. as long as what's happening is consensual like both parties are we're we're on board for this so as long as it's yeah. consensual as mm -hmm. long as nobody's body is being harmed or injured. Yeah. And then lastly, as long as there is no introduction of any third parties. So yeah. obviously like you would never invite another person in and you would not even invite another person in digitally. As long yeah. as there are no third parties, it's consensual and no one is being harmed, no one's sustaining yeah. injury, then I would say, yeah, like you and your husband, you guys explore together. Like you, and it doesn't mm -hmm. have to necessarily be that you're putting on a performance for your husband. It could just be that you're willing and open. Yeah. To allow your husband to, hey, let's try this. Like, do you, do you think you might be interested in this? Just having that kind of openness because you're in a safe space and you're in, in your marriage bed. It yeah, sense. it's so crazy because I always viewed it as that. Again, being from a worldly background, I kind of always viewed it as this is important. But it's like, it's so weird because I don't really talk to a lot of like of my Christian girlfriends. We don't talk about this. So I'm actually curious. I didn't know people are being so, you know, I didn't know this. That's yeah. how we are in the bedroom. I'm like, yeah. this is the one time we are back in the world, I was starting to feel guilty. You know, this is something I don't have to feel guilty about this. Right. Let's, let's have fun, you know, yeah. but I didn't really, I guess this is something that I don't really talk to with a lot of people. So it's like, I'm kind of curious now, is that something people are 
is it like a shame they're like like what is it what do you think keeps them from like i said being adventurous and like taking it there because and it's like it's true it's like i don't want to say too much yeah but it's yeah like, you know this is the one place where people really connect you know right. so it's like yeah i don't know why do you think why do you think people would tend to shy away from being adventurous in the bedroom well i think it's similar to you know what we touched on in the beginning of the conversation where it's like you know oh, the sex, world hijacked is, it. yeah yeah sex is a yeah. beautiful and wonderful thing but when it is managed wrongly it becomes sinful and so then the church yeah. overcorrected and said sex is sin essentially or sexuality, yeah. like any expression of it at all, such that now when people get in marriages, they don't even know how to function properly. They don't even know how to function properly within, you know, their their sexuality because of the messages that they were that they were taught. And I personally didn't know that people felt like this either until I started making videos and I would see people kind of trickling in in the comments. Oh, section. comments! And I was like, yeah. oh, oh, y'all think? Oh, I didn't know that. Like, Is this what just, people really think? Yeah, okay. it's very different from the way that I think and I feel. But a lot of people, you know, have hangups about even like we're not talking about like doing things sinful like we're just talking about like between you and your husband they, they feel like there's like a barrier and i'm like that's oh. weird that's weird so yeah so just and that, that, yeah no i i think it you should be open when it comes to that kind of stuff and mm -hmm. even if it's something like you said that confidence thing where it's like you don't know how to do something there are books that you can read there are even your closest girlfriends that you can you know, discuss with if it's someone you really trust, you know that they won't use that against you or whatever. There, There is knowledge to be found. So it's like, mm -hmm. if there is something that your husband, like, I think we both pretty much have outspoken partners, which I'm grateful for. And I'm like, sorry, I just thought about something. <laughs> My husband is so, he will, no, I'm not even gonna say, but he is really outspoken, so. You know, I think, you know, if it's something that your man wants to do, and like you said, it's not harming you, it's not doing something sinful or using something that was not meant for that, okay? Mm -hmm. But if it's something like pleasurable, you know, you don't know how to do it, you can learn how to do it, you know? And that's when servitude comes into play because it's like, what does it say? I forget what scripture was, you probably know, but our body is not our own it's for our husbands and our husband's body is for us okay so the next thing that i would recommend is to praise your husband for yeah. genuine authentic and real things i wouldn't yeah. recommend that you just like say things to him that are just like fluff that even he knows are inauthentic but yeah. and i would also say if you have a hard time complimenting your husband then like take some time and actually observe him and, and consider like what things in him are praiseworthy that I can genuinely extend compliments to him about. Yeah, ponder on that. No, I think it's true. It kind of goes with just, I forget which point I said, but it's basically like in the Song of Solomon when she was talking so good about her man. And it's yeah. like, it's like, yeah, guys do that to us, but we could also do that to them. And I I think in my personal experience, because I think I've been married half the time as you, five years, but you know, he does like when, and he's not a super over, over person, like he doesn't like too much praise, but when it matters, it does matter. You know, maybe if he's had a hard time or a hard day, and that's when I will come in I'm really happy that you go to work for our family every day, you know, because not a lot of people do that for their families or they, I'm really grateful that you are providing. And so I can stay home. You know what I mean? And he's told me like those times that you said that really meant something, you know, wow. and this is not even just in like a sexual way, but this is just when in marriage in general, you want to be kind. You want to let your partner know you're grateful for them, like you appreciate them. Mm -hmm. And it, it's important because what if you, which is something like as a homemaker, I would say this was the hardest thing switching between the two. And I don't want to get too much off topic, but just coming from a job where jobs work by reward based systems you know it's like oh you did this you get a reward or you get a promotion when you come to being a homemaker it's like you're doing everything and you don't always hear good job this meal was good you right. really did that not every single time so it would be nice to hear and not like you said not anything that's not true because if i know something is not true and they're lying now all of a sudden you're in question 
and I can't really ask you questions because it's like, I personally, I need to go to someone who's going to give me the real honest deal because right. it's like, I, I want to change for the better. I want to be better. But when it's a time where it's like, no, I really need to hear this. You know, like if I slaved over a meal, I tried a new recipe or something, or I tried something new. Like uh, when we came back from Ukraine, I tried to make the bread that his mom uh, made. And, you know, I really worked hard on it. And that's the times where it's like, I really, even if he didn't think it's good, he'll say something like, I appreciate the time you took to make yeah. this. And I'm yeah. like, oh, so you think it's nasty? Okay. You know, but it's like those compliments matter. And I'm sure it matters to our men too. And I, I agree with that. Yeah. I like how you pulled, um, how you referenced the Song of Solomon that she showered him with as much praise as yeah. I had not noticed That's that. Amazing. I had not taken thought to that. And that is a really yeah. good point. And I think because men are not as, vocal about their need for being appreciated by yeah. those women, we can sometimes forget that they actually have that need. And so what I would say mm -hmm. is take the time. Like, did he get a fresh haircut and he looks like super handsome? Like, tell him that. Like, yeah. if his beard is lined up and he's looking at, tell him that. Like, tell yeah. him if he's got on a nice outfit, he's looking fresh, like, comment on that. And like you said, also, yeah. about even, um, I think that's a really good point about complimenting him about being a real man. Like, yeah. thank you for taking care of our family. Thank you for housing us. Thank you for feeding us. Like, yeah, providing. Kinds of, for providing. Like, those kinds of things are very helpful. And I do think that men really appreciate it. And you'll yeah. always know when, like, your husband appreciates something because you may say something like, I remember one time I, I just was like, just kind of flippantly saying it. And I was like, you know, babe, like, thank you for being a real man. And he was like, Aww. he said, he was like, how, how am I, how am I a real man? And he like oh, wanted okay. me to he tell him. <laughs> and so, and I'm like, but, it, and he, he was like trying to not let me know that he was like really, really happy. For, yeah, he yeah. was really happy. And I was like, but that's, that's what like women need to do that. Wives need to do that. Like thank him for the things that he does. Compliment him when he looks nice, when he does things well, because it really does add like, it makes him feel like, you know, he could puff out his chest and worthy. You're the who and, did that. Yeah. And to be honest, if you're not doing it and let's say he has a job, I guarantee if you're with an attractive man, someone else is telling him, you should be your husband's biggest cheerleader. Someone at work is probably telling him, oh, you got a haircut? Because when you're at work, people would notice if I do something yeah. new to my hair. So I know they're noticing on him. It's like, yeah. no, you need to be the main one telling him, I appreciate this. You look yeah. good, you know, because. Yeah. It's true. This is human nature. We all like this. So if he's not hearing this at home and the only time he's hearing compliments is from other people, it's like, ouch. I, I didn't even think about going in that direction, but you're right. Like, um, you, you may not like, like, cause I understand that marriage sometimes it has its ups and downs. There's challenges and, and there are things that can happen. Mm -hmm. that you're not able to really look at your husband rightly you know like you may only be able to see the hurt or you know he made yeah. a comment that and so sometimes you're not able to see the positive things about him but other people are and they are telling him. oh yeah and i'm like oh, and the yeah. same is true in the reverse like yeah. when, if you're a man married to a beautiful woman there yeah. are men telling her that, that they think that she's beautiful yeah and the same thing is true for your husband like when he yeah. looks good taking care of himself he's got nice outfit fresh haircut best believe yeah. when he goes to the store somebody goes to the store goes to work somebody is even if it's not even like malicious or sinful they're just like yeah. oh, nice like i really like your haircut like what you know what i mean so i'm like yeah you're right don't let the only positive reinforcement i'm from outside words be from other people let yeah. you're right be the number the main person that's like you know what? i really like the way that you're looking i really appreciate everything that you do you need to have you are the number one person you are and i'm glad that you brought that yeah. up. Right. all right so i think we're gonna bring the video to a close and going long i hope that you guys enjoyed this we we yes. kind of we started out and we touched on a lot of different things i hope you guys yeah. enjoyed the variety um gwen where can they find you like where are you on social media and things yeah gwen Bo, uh g-w-e-n-b-o on youtube and i have an instagram marion and gwen and that's kind of like our hiking Instagram, but that's pretty much it. You guys can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Yes. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you so much. much. I really enjoyed this. I'm and I, I really you. hope it was, I hope it was edifying too. And 
just want to reiterate to people because I know we did touch on a lot of stuff that like you know I have come from a place of living in complete sin so there is never you're never a lost cause you are never at a place where you can't change anything you know so just remember that if he, there was something that was said that maybe stepped on your toes or something just take it as you know this is advice this is good advice and I'm happy I really do I hope it was edifying yes Guys, thank you for uh, watching. And if you have any other suggestions about other people that you would like to see featured on the channel, please drop their channel names below. And as always, thank you for tuning in and I will see you next time. Okay. Bye. <laughs>